It's that time of year again, and Christmas is just around the corner. And if you still haven't got gifts yet, well, I have some good news for you. For the next five days, I'll be breaking down some of the best gifts you could get and dishing out some pro tips. And the best part, we'll be giving away all the items that we mention here. Welcome to day one of Julia's super duper, ultra superb, wonderful, glorious, magnificently splendid holiday gift guide giveaway. Computers are much more than just computers now. For some people, it's a work of art that they pour tens, if not hundreds of hours into. It's something they're excited to build, something that they're proud to show off. And now, it's your turn. Here's our high-end Skylake build for 2016. Even though KB Lake is just around the corner, it could still be weeks or months before people start getting their hands on them. Plus, it gives us an extra excuse to do more build guides in the future. In this high-end guide, we've got three tips that can help turn your regular PC into a glorious shrine worthy of the PC Master Race. Let's start off with a rundown of all the parts we'll be using. The first part of our Skylake build is obviously a Skylake processor. We went with the i7-6700K processor, which features four cores, a TDP of 91 watts, and a base frequency of 4 gigahertz. With some modest overclocking, most people should be able to hit 4.5 gigahertz, no problem. So why a 6700K? This is a high-end build guide after all. Sure, an i5 will perform similarly in most games, but an i7 gives you the potential to do so much more. You have extra headroom for streaming gameplay, video editing, or just multitasking like a madman who has a phobia of closing Chrome tabs, like me. And why not Broadwell E? Well, this brings us to our first pro tip. Most programs and games aren't that great at using more than four cores now. In fact, clock speed is still quite important for things like loading games and rendering out videos. For those curious, our friends at Hardware Connects have a great video comparing the performance of the 6700K and the 6800K with some surprising results. We'll link it down below if you're curious, but if you don't have time to watch, then spoiler alert, an overclocked 6700K will beat a stock 6800K, and a 6700K is easier to overclock than the 6800K. Now to cool it all, we chose a Corsair H100i liquid CPU cooler. The 240mm dual radiator offers more than enough dissipation area to easily cool the 6700K, even under full load while overclocked. And it stays pretty quiet too, which is always welcome. The next item and pro tip is the ASUS Z170 Pro Gaming Motherboard. While it's pretty similar to most other Z170 motherboards out there, there's two standout features that people may glance over when picking out their own motherboard. The first is the Supreme FX Audio chipset. It has a built-in headphone amplifier on a segregated circuitry that is capable of powering headphones with an impedance of up to 300 ohms. And second, the Intel Gigabit chipset on this board is capable of teaming multiple networks together, so you can actually use a wired connection and Wi-Fi at the same time and assign different programs or tasks to different networks. For example, you can prioritize gaming on your wired connection while things like music streaming, voice chat, or internet browsers can use Wi-Fi. Yes, it does all come from the same source in the end, but this lets you have finer control over how much bandwidth or priority certain things can use. Both of these are actually really impressive features that you previously weren't able to find on motherboards. Audiophiles have been spending hundreds of dollars on external DACs and amplifiers, while most people would need workstation-grade motherboards or PCIe network cards with teaming, both of which can get expensive. Next up is 32 gigs of Corsair's new Vengeance LED RAM. While it's not programmable, the white LEDs are a great addition to any other lights you may already have in your system. If you are looking for programmable RGB RAM, then surprisingly, you'll have to keep on waiting. For the power supply, we chose the Corsair RM850X for one big reason how quiet it is. People often complain about coil whine or electrical noise coming from their power supply under a heavy load. And this, unfortunately, is something that's very hard to measure or predict since it varies from person to person. But the RMX series tries to minimize the noise by using capacitors and transformers that pass through stricter levels of quality control. And of course, it also features a zero RPM fan mode for completely silent operation. 
For storage, we have a one terabyte Intel 600P NVMe SSD. It sits comfortably in the sweet spot, offering faster than SATA performance while still coming in at a reasonable price of 50 cents per gigabyte. And that leads us to our pro tip number three, an M.2 form factor drive is an excellent way of adding storage without needing any additional cables. It's even better in a tiny, tiny ITX case. And if you've ever had to build in a small ITX case, then you know exactly what we're talking about. For our graphics card, we've got the ASUS GeForce GTX 1080 Turbo. Now you might be wondering why we went with this instead of their more expensive Strix model. And the answer to that is just like the i7 we chose earlier, versatility. The Turbo's blower style fan is great on its own, but even better if you're pairing up two cards in SLI or using it in a very compact system where you may not have as much airflow. And finally, rounding out the last of our parts are the cable mods, sleeved extension cables, and LED lighting strips. Sleeved cables are a staple in any high-end system, and this is no exception. It's not just for looks either, they're much easier to route than the stock cables, and they hold their shape better afterwards as well. And of course, additional RGB LED strips let you customize your system to fit whatever color scheme you want. Plus, the cable mod LED strip is even compatible with the ASUS Aura motherboards, so you can coordinate the lighting inside the case with the lighting underneath the motherboard. Now, keen viewers out there may have noticed already that there's no case. And that's because for our first giveaway, we're doing a do-it-yourself kit. That's right, you actually get the pleasure of building your own system yourself. I mean, I wouldn't want to be given a Lego kit that was already built, right? So all you need to do is add your own case or use these parts in an existing case or use a cardboard box. Don't use a cardboard box, not a good idea. So that wraps up day one of my holiday gift guide giveaway. If you guys want a chance to win all these parts, head over to the link in the description and make sure you subscribe for the rest of the holiday gift guide giveaway videos. There's five days, five videos, five prizes. Every time we release a new video, there'll be new ways to enter. You can get bonus entries for doing all that. Links in the description. Contest is open until January 2nd, 2017. So what you waiting for? Go on. All right, so don't forget to check out our other videos right over here. Follow us on Twitter down over here. And as always, like, comment for fans with benefits, and subscribe for day two and more holiday giveaway stuff right over here. And don't forget to check out our contest. Happy holidays, guys.